Many of us have our own unique habits and rituals that we carry out on a daily basis, like carrying around a lucky penny or avoiding cracks on a sidewalk. But for people with obsessive compulsive disorder, those innocent rituals take a different form, often causing distress and interfering with daily activities. Obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, is a severe and often debilitating neuropsychiatric disorder that affects approximately 3% of the population. Due to the nature of its symptoms, it's largely depicted in a stereotypical manner in the media and in everyday life people often refer to their overly meticulous behavior as OCD. But being overly neat, specific in the way you do things, and wanting your house to always be spotless does not mean you have OCD. OCD is characterized by severe, persistent, and unwanted thoughts, urges, and images that come in the form of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are extremely disturbing and pervasive thoughts that interfere with everyday life. Compulsions are ritualistic behaviors or mental acts that are performed repeatedly in an attempt to relieve the anxiety or stress that obsessions tend to create. Compulsions sometimes, but not always, follow the obsessions. The relief experience from the repetitive compulsions is relatively short-lived and tends to return if the obsessions persist. Once OCD develops, it is usually reinforced through a positive feedback cycle, where compulsive behavior alleviates the stress and anxiety that obsessions tend to induce, but in turn, reinforce the compulsive behavior. For example, an individual with OCD may feel anxious about certain diseases and can obsess about getting sick. To alleviate this distress, they may feel the need to wash their hands excessively or avoid contact with certain objects. The repetitive washing or avoidance will make them feel better in the short term. However, when they feel the same distress again, they are more likely to repeat those actions that reduce their stress. Individuals suffering from OCD can undergo two types of treatments, medication, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and therapy. One of the most common forms of therapy for treating OCD is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT. CBT is a short-term, goal-oriented psychotherapy that is used to teach individuals how their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors work in tandem and develops personal coping skills that can be used to change negative patterns of thinking and behavior. To help explain what CBT is, we arranged an interview with a physician that is trained in CBT. The C stands for cognitive, which refers to the fact that people have thoughts and interpretations and images in their minds in certain situations. It's how you think about things and perceive situations that dictate the kind of emotions that will follow. In anxiety disorders such as OCD, emotions are one of anxiety and distress and are mediated by the kind of thoughts that people have. In the case of OCD, the thoughts are obsessions, which are the cognitions that we need to work on in CBT. The B refers to behavior, and the therapy focuses on changing aspects of the behavior that are dysfunctional and are maintaining the anxiety state. The therapy comes up from the point of view that the way we think about things and the way we behave around them will dictate the anxiety that we feel in those scenarios. Anxiety is maintained by the kind of distorted thinking that the patient has. If you break the cycle of distorted thinking and distorted behavior, we can get a breakthrough in the level of anxiety. The person starts to realize that they can enter a situation that made them anxious in the past and stay in the situation thinking more rationally. The patient's role is to stay engaged in the therapy. In order to break the cycle, the patient has to do a lot of work on their own. The work is done between sessions and is based on the idea that if you don't practice a skill, you're not going to learn it very well. CBT is a skill or a set of tools that you develop for yourself and use when you need them. CBT takes about 12 to 14 weeks. The first few weeks are usually about gathering information about the person's particular manifestation of anxiety and doing psychoeducation around it. We gather information about the person's own form of OCD, what are their rituals, and if they have obsessions that bother them. Then we create a hierarchy of things that cause them distress. This is a tool that we use for the rest of the sessions. First, working with items on the hierarchy that don't cause as much stress, and when they become comfortable, move on to slightly more distressing situations. It's a graduated approach with dealing with the hierarchy. The person becomes more used to the concept of what they have to do. The patient becomes aware of when they are obsessing instead of doing it automatically. They realize that there's another way of dealing with the anxiety, that what's being taught in therapy is actually working, and can use their past success of overcoming their obsessive compulsive symptoms in other situations. Sometimes CBT involves medication that can help at the same time while doing therapy. CBT is not for everyone. Individuals have to be very motivated to change because it is hard work and causes a lot of distress. 
In this therapy, you have to feel more distressed before you start feeling less anxious. Not everybody's ready to do something that difficult, and not everybody has the time. It also can't work for people too severe in their presentation of OCD, as their anxiety gets in the way of agreeing with what they need to do. They find that they are arguing and bargaining with almost everything they're asked to do, and are too anxious to complete the homework. Those people are candidates for medication, which would tone down the anxiety level so they could engage in the therapy. The advantage of CBT is that it really works well. I see such great improvements in so many people who are motivated and do the homework. And it really does work so well in people who are ready to make the commitment. 